Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi Pudai Leiden. Hello Leiden. Welcome to the newest episode of our weekly English speaking show. As you know, our show is about stories, stories of international community living in Leiden. And today we have two amazing stories to share with you. Our guests uh, are Andres Ordo and uh, Tofi Kanafi. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, as you know, we have a tradition in our studio. Every guest is asked to bring um, a little item that has emotional value for you. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't we start from you, Tofik? What did you bring us today? Okay. I bring these uh, two books with me. Uh, this actually relates to um, the reason that I'm here in the Netherlands. I'm a PhD student at uh, LIAS and uh, mm-hmm. Kaitelfe the Royal Institute for uh, Southeast Asian and Caribbean Studies. I'm working on censorships, and it just so happened that these books uh, that, I, um, that I have with me uh, could actually hardly be found in Indonesia, but I found them really, really easily in, in, the, in Book and Solder and uh, Kringlop. So, uh, uh-huh. so it's, it's a fortuity for me. It's a, it's, a, it's a blessing to actually be here and uh, get exposed to these uh, special items, the books. That is fantastic. Can you take them back to um, Indonesia for reprint? Uh, New prints are only widely available, but uh, in the 80s, this was uh, highly forbidden. It it, it was actually not only censored, but it was completely banned. And uh, students, uh, there were stories that uh, students who distributed uh, copies, uh, illegal copies of the books, were actually uh, rounded up by the military and uh, detained for uh, up to five to ten years simply because uh, books and it's just novel. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So it has a lot of power coming from. That is true. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. What about you, Andres? What do you have to share with us? Today? Well, not 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 something so heavy. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's very light. Yeah, no, but I've, your story is heavy. So I have I brought two things, uh, and both are uh, cameras. Uh, one is from my grandpa, uh, and one is from my father. Uh, I started shooting with this camera, and I have taken pictures of my family with this camera, so I restored it. Uh, so I'm a photographer, uh, and they have a lot of sentimental value because, well, they've been used by, by my parents to take pictures of us as a family, of my uncles and all my family members. Uh, it's nice that I have them now, so and that they work. So that's that's why they're so special for me. And um, yeah, well, my my father and my grandpa are not with us anymore. So it's it's uh, every time that I see it, it reminds me of uh, of, of them and uh, and their lives and what type of uh, emotion they had when they were using it. Yeah, definitely. Th- that must be fantastic to view those photos. That you have from those times, and I see a Russian camera. Yeah, yeah, it's a scene. It. How uh, did you get that one? Yeah, this is from my father. I have no clue who he got it, uh, but I think it was the '60s in uh, in Colombia. So I'm sure that there was something coming on from both sides. Uh, uh, but yeah, this uh, this I didn't know it was a Russian camera when I started using it. I just knew it was not the the the, the most Awesome camera, but then later I, I learned about the lens, mm-hmm. and uh, so it, it's uh, well, it's really wanted lens by by some people. Mm-hmm. So I like it. Uh, it takes really good pictures. Uh, it's heavy as crazy, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it works. It's Russian, so it's, you know Russian stuff is just like keeps going for years. And if it doesn't work, then you just take it and uh, yeah. it does itself. Yeah, yeah. Like, like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> We have uh, made short profiles into your life, Mm -hmm. and today we're going to watch them. So first, uh, we start from your topic. Where did you take us? Um, It's to my house, uh, my humble abode in Leiden. Hello, Coffee. Good to see you. Good to see you. You must be Tahir. Yes. So, what brought you you to Leiden? Um, I uh, what brought me here is um, uh, was magic. Actually, I'm a PhD student at the uh, Leiden University. I'm affiliated with the Graduate School of Humanities, uh, Lias and Kai Telfe. Oh wow, we have company. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, I'm Tofik's son. And your name is? Kala. 
Kala. So Kala, we are going to come back to you uh -huh. and ask you questions. I can see uh -huh. you're having chicken today. Yes. <laughs> yes. What was the most striking uh, image that caught your eye and you thought, wow, what is this? Uh, I anticipated it, but, but, but the answer to that question would be bikes, like tons of them, like millions of uh, bikes. Uh, there is more uh, bikes that I could uh, find elsewhere, I think. How do you uh, commute? Bicycle, of course. <laughs> okay. And you, Kala? Uh, do you use bicycle? Bicycle, definitely. I like uh, biking. He's having chicken. Mm -hmm. What do you normally have here? Despite the, you know, the, uh, the sometime period here uh, that I've been living in the Netherlands, uh, I'm still eating Indonesian food. So uh, we make rice, we make... Uh, Spicy food, you know, uh, I cannot, I cannot leave that behind. Can you name any good restaurants where we can go and experience authentic Indonesian food? Authentic Indonesian food with a little appropriations, of course. Uh, I would recommend uh, this, this toko at the Langamar. It's called Ibu Cilik. Uh, it's Indonesian name. Ibu means a mother and then Cilik means a small. Uh, I think it, it it's... It says a lot. A lot uh, it says a lot about their humility, you know, in serving food. But they serve um, good food. Where to get good, spicy, true sambal? Uh, my first recommendation would be here. We can make sambal for you, the authentic one, and then the, and then the, of course uh, that that store, that that restaurant, small restaurant that I that I mentioned earlier, Ibutili. Come on, you can do better than this. And... Oh, okay, right on. I'm seeing a lot of images behind you. So uh, these are paintings um, by uh, Anton Pick. Somehow I'm, I'm, I'm infatuated by Anton Pick. Why? I don't know, the imagery is, is, is um, uh, honest. Simple and uh, it always uh, tells a lot about the daily life of the Netherlands. Uh, things that are just like this one. Um, I think the, this is the scenery from the 18th century and then by Anton Pick. And also, I can see two music instruments and a telescope. <laughs> and it's a National Geographic telescope. Did you uh, witness the eclipse recently? I missed that one. Oh. But, but, but I didn't. Did you I see? Saw, I saw it on other days, other nights, we would also uh, use this one. And so you have interest in astronomy? I'm not sure if it's called interest, but, you know, I like uh, seeing the sky. So you must have visited the observatory near Hortus. Yeah, the Sterrenburg. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. There is actually um, the same um, observatorium um, where I come from. And it was actually built by the Dutch. So that building reminds me of uh, the one the, that we have in, the, in my hometown in Bali. It's guitar? Am well, I right? It's, it's a combination between the guitar and the ukulele, so they call it guitar lele. Okay. You are my oh, we have a recommendation, so you have to do that now. You, you play that, but not me. Okay. I just need to make sure that it works. guitar dan bernyanyi. Kalau waktu tak bertepi Di atas langit di bawah tanah Di hembus angin terseret arus Untuk saudara tercinta Untuk jiwa yang terluka Dengan... Lovely! Uh, I love the colors energy uh, <laughs> uh, Rumbling around uh, the room um, Tafik, you are a man of many talents how did you start uh, playing the um, guitar lala? Oh, um, how is it even an instrument? Guitar and ukulele and put it together. It, it's 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 called guitar lele because it's a combination of an ukulele and a guitar all together. Uh, the last four strings of it uh, make uh, similar notes and sounds uh, like ukulele, but then the, the last two make it six uh, resembles a guitar. I I learned it by myself. Wow. Andres, what about you? Where did you take us? Also home. Oh. Uh, uh, actually in Dyer Dorp, my, my, my place. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, you? It's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. And I understand your kids are sleeping, so you have to keep it quiet. Yeah, yeah. Come. Cool. Let's come in. Thank you. So, how you ended up in Leiden? 
Oh, long story short, I moved out from Colombia to the UK, uh, spent a year and a half there, and then I ended up coming here to the Netherlands. So it's been like 13 years since then. Uh, I live in the Netherlands in several cities, but in Leiden be mostly because of my cousin. So she studied here as well. Mm -hmm. She lives in uh, Oosgeest and yeah, that's it. I love the way the city was laid out. So I got lost a couple of times intentionally. I do that in cities. Uh, and I love that it felt a little bit like Amsterdam, but without a tourist back then. That's a very, very interesting photograph. It doesn't matter what it is. It's, it's supposed to do something with you. So I am a photograph and uh, let's say that it, I like to photograph things that are not visible. So um, that has to do with uh, so above, so as below. But it's part of a project that is called Jurema. And it has to do uh, something with a way of, uh, of looking at the world after uh, being immersed in, a, in the way the indigenous people in Colombia see things photographer or an artist who influenced you a lot anybody you have in mind yeah yeah so um, the uh, the first one that comes to mind is Trent Park I have a book from him as well uh, he's a documentary photography from uh, Australia uh, and he works documentary but his pictures don't look documentary and that's something that I really like uh, another guy that I really love is uh, Eggleston William Eggleston and uh, is, he, he, he instituted something that's called the dom democratic uh, photograph uh, method so you photograph everything so I don't know whatever pile of books or anything and, and, and Daido Moriyama that's a Japanese one yeah. okay and in Leiden for example if I ask you what is the most intriguing most uh, interesting place for you as a photographer well Funnily enough, in Leiden, let's say if, 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 if I want to talk about representation, so like taking pictures and, and, and representation, I've, there is a door in the Peterskirk uh, plain that is actually the, 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 it's a door for a, for a house. Uh, so this is a garden behind. What amazes me is that it's, it's such a beautiful door, but for, for, for something that is just a, just a wall. So uh, you don't know what's behind that, and I, I, I'm really fascinated by it because it's, a, it's the steps are beautiful in stone. It's it's, it's wooden, uh, and I've seen once, just by chance, what's behind. And I really love that idea of uh, I was telling you before, of seeing the what's invisible and trying to bring it up in photography. And of course, I can take the picture of the door uh, at several times during the day. I'm never gonna see what's behind. A young man like you, if he's looking for uh, a partner, where should they go? Oh no, that's difficult. Then, for me, romantic has to do maybe because uh, because I, I relate with my wife. Uh, I would say head coffee house that that that's in Het Gerecht met the Papengracht. That's where I met her, and it's a really beautiful coffee that where they don't they play no music. The place has been like like it is, so it's they leave it as as supposed to be. Uh, since the 60s already uh, so that's a really I, I really I like the idea of seeing something original in Leiden any restaurant that you really love going to? ah yeah we go uh, all, every Sunday to Bar Local so it, that's in the um, you have the Hochlandse Kerk and it's just diagonal from the Hochlandse Kerk Andres this street is like amazing I mean you have this church how is this experience living here <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I mean, I, my kids can run here and they just go out of the door and we can park our bikes here all behind and we have neighbors. It feels like a, a small town. Thank you, Andres, for taking us to your home. How long have you been taking photos and where does that passion come from? Yeah, I started, the, I mean, the first pictures that I took when I was like six, seven or something like that with this camera. Uh, then my father bought me a camera that I could not break <laughs> so it was an ever flash or something like that but uh, I took it everywhere and then it stopped uh, I took pictures as well when I was a teenager uh, developed in the, in the bathroom and my father's help uh, helped me 
taught me to, how to how to do that. Uh, and then life took over. I studied uh, my career, uh, whatever. I just uh, a lot of years passed by, and of course I took pictures with my telephone uh, and with my ca cameras before, but it was not like serious. It was just mm. taking pictures of my friends and people. And uh, I started an internal search of what is it that, I, that makes me happy. And I, I, I noticed there were two things, like music uh, and, and, and taking pictures. Mm. So I had seen a um, poster of the Photo Academy in, the, in, in, a, in a place where I was studying Dutch mm -hmm. in the Bay Plus A, uh, and it really amazed me. And I thought, yeah, I want to, I want to study that. You, you just sometimes you just have this uh, this epiphany. This is something that I want. I would like to give it a try. Uh, and I was working at the time. I'm wor I kept working at the time that I did my studies for photographer. My boss, he said, yeah, no worries. Take one day extra uh, for, from your work. Uh, no problem. Uh, three years later, I, I, have, I finished my study as an autonomous photograph, they, they call it like that. It's been amazing, and now, now I'm, I'm trying to make some time for it. Tofik, uh, man of literature, where does that passion come from? Um, I, it, it, uh, I began the, um, reading books since I was uh, little, really, uh, from the comics, and then I developed these infatuations of uh, interesting stories. And uh, I realized later on that I could, uh, you know, dig more and more interesting stories through uh, literatures um, mm -hmm. that that were not so widely available in the in the, in the libraries in Indonesia when when where I come from, uh, which adds to uh, somehow I, I take it as a challenge. That's why I grow more fond of uh, literature because because the, the the limitations of it and then the interesting story that I want to dig. Um, um, somehow made me more uh, intrigued in actually getting uh, to know more about uh, literature. So your research subject is currently also related to Indonesian literature, is Yes, it? Indonesian literature. Uh, what about it? Which aspect of it? So, um, now this is rather serious, <laughs> despite literature. Um, so uh, there is this uh, few novels uh, written in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Uh, these novels uh, speak about the unspeakable, uh, the, which is the, the mass killings of 1965, where 500 to a million people were, who were affiliated with the Communist Party were uh, assassinated, and uh, the remainders were ostracized, uh, imprisoned, and then the, the rights were taken. Uh, so speaking about it was, w w was uh, forbidden. Yet, these uh, novels, there were only like uh, several of them, not less than five, they actually uh, they actually brought the theme of it and into uh, the surface, and then they got uh, distributed somehow. Uh, they they managed to get published without having to face censorships mm -hmm. or even the banned. So, uh, whereas uh, the censorship was very rampant during the period, so I tried to find out more about what what's going on, what was mm -hmm. what what happened. Uh, how could uh, rampant censorship did not actually arrive at this book, uh, and uh, this book just could get away with, you know, the telling? Yeah, uh, so that's what I'm trying to figure out: uh, the reason behind uh, the publication of uh, the books, the authorial the, um, um, uh, initiatives, and then the, the mechanism of censorships. Uh, that's what I'm trying to uh, figure out in oh, regarding subjects. the. Yes, rather serious indeed. I'll come back to that again, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, Andres, um, is there anything that um, you can see only through the lens of the camera that you would otherwise definitely miss in the real life? The camera looks different than the, the human eye. Mm. Uh, so the camera, with the camera you see things in a different way. So how, how can I explain that? So if, if you're looking at, at, at me at the same time or I'm looking at you, I see there's a screen behind and there's many things, mm -hmm. but if I were to take a picture, the, the way I perceive it is going to be completely different from the way the camera is perceiving it. There was this guy, uh, called Ansel Adams, who used to say that the, 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 the film is actually the partiture and the, the print is the, how you interpret that, that, that partiture, that music playing. 
So you can do a lot of, of things with the same basic uh, uh, stuff, bring it up and, and transform it into something that has some quality. And, and uh, for me, a good picture has to be a picture that it's not uh, just showing you something, but that it allows you to bring something inside of you and think. A question to both of you. I know uh, to figure you already started uh, um, touching the subject. So um, colonialism, both countries that you come <coughs> from, Colombia and Indonesia has been mm -hmm. colonized. Um, how did it affect you? For example, Tofik, you live in a country that has colonized mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia, and you're actually studying the subject of repressions mm -hmm. while you are being in this country. How does it make you feel? I mean, are there any hidden sentiments that from time to time appear um, in any form? I um, always joke around about the historical relation between the two countries that, I, uh, that, that, uh, that I'm uh, somehow connected to. Mm -hmm that the, the reason Indonesia exists as it is today uh, was partly because it was uh, shaped by uh, this uh, colonial the, you know, um, trajectory. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Dutch, of course, um, is uh, the longest to actually colonize the country. Um, somehow, um, uh, I, I, I put uh, emphasis more on the uh, connection that the two countries, uh, that Indonesia and Netherlands has, rather than the, the sentiments that I have of uh, uh, the Netherlands. Um, and um, uh, I was recently involved in this uh, project. It's called the Werrell van der Oots, mm -hmm. where uh, the Netherlands, I think, are quite uh, liberal enough. And uh, they, they recognize um, the oppressions that they did, uh, although it, it refers only to one particular period in Indonesia of, of the 100 years uh, they, they stayed there. I don't know if state is understatement, but they stayed there. Uh, where they began uh, looking at their uh, dark pages of history. And, um, and it was March last year that the king actually went to Indonesia and, and uh, apologized for the, um, uh, the extreme violence that they committed in, the, um, in Indonesia sometimes. And, uh, uh, and uh, I was actually hoping uh, me being... That, that really opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually hoping that me being here could actually you know, uh, expose me to that kind of experience more and more uh, for me to actually bring home and then share with uh, Indonesian, my Indonesian uh, fellows to start recognizing that um, it was only recently that we also did, uh, you know, uh, similar uh, repressions, or still does, to uh, some uh, countrymen in Papua, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we might start to uh, open the, the dark page in our history and then start, you know, uh, doing what the Dutch has tried to do in the recent uh, years. So that's, uh, that's what I would like to put uh, emphasis more rather than, the, you know, uh, personal sentiments on the relationship between the two. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Worth of um, turning that mirror into our people sometimes. That is true. Um, Mm -hmm. When does the oppressed become the oppressor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, what about you, Andres? Uh, Colombia has been colonized by Spain. Yeah. Um, I know from my own culture that um, my country has been colonized five times by, you know, five different countries, the, mm -hmm. la the latest being Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of elements. For example, um, there were no museums until the Soviet Union came to my country. Mm -hmm. um, now, every time I go to the museum in my country, I really appreciate that element of um, seeing, you know, cultural aspects of things, social aspects of things um, through photography, through paintings or books um, that otherwise wouldn't be accessible if not the Soviet Union who would bring all of this together. Um, not to romanticize the uh, op uh, oppression, obviously a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, we have lost, uh, uh, Utopic for example talked about uh, the, uh, the censorship and mm -hmm. we ha lost a lot of um, members of the literary community in 1937. So mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of elements, heavy aspects of occupation and oppression. There are also a lot of things that you do appreciate, for example, speaking the language of you know um, the country. How does it make you feel? Um, it's a mixed feeling because if you see it from the perspective of the Spaniards. Uh, the Spaniards came in and then uh, they tricked the indigenous people they uh, mix actually with the population, some of them, and then, then there, was, there was this mestizo uh, 
let's call it race. I don't like to talk about races, mm -hmm. but uh, but if I think of it, there's still a scar uh, in the country where you have uh, we have indigenous population, we have black population, we have uh, let's call it Latin American population because I I don't like to say white or anything, uh, and there is this divide uh, between the three. Uh, of course, we 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 are really open, uh, but I still feel that 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 people, for example use some words that come from, from that time in a um, derogative way or an uh, insulting way. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in Spanish, uh, in Colombia, if, if you f see somebody uh, that is uh, uh, doing something nasty, some people say, uh, what an Indian. Mm -hmm. yeah? And that's, that's right away wrong. And I think it has to do with the, 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 the problem, the colonialism problem, which is based on idea and the idea of, of being superior. So Europe culture is superior, so we have to spread it out and the other the other people's culture is not. Mm. Which is ridiculous. When when you have when you start noticing the, the good things on on every all all sides uh, then it's it's a different it's a different story. So I, I find it difficult to say because uh, part of me may have Spaniard blood, and part of me might, might have Indian blood, part of me, uh, I don't know if I might have uh, black blood, which is just people's blood. And uh, uh, I'm just part of, uh, I'm a consequence of, of that. If, if the Spaniards were not uh, there, I would not be here. So that's a, that's a, that's a little bit difficult uh, and contrived. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, as you know, in October, we celebrate um, our freedom or our resistance to the Spanish forces. Um, have you been able to celebrate October 3rd in here in Leiden? Yeah, Leiden yeah. outside. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. Funnily enough, just really close by by the Bonteku and they play salsa all the time. So that's that's, <laughs> that's really weird. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's uh, something to experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, missing definitely. it. I'm missing it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I uh, really hope that this year it will open up. Because it's a nice opportunity for the international community to be immersed into how the local people are celebrating the, their uh, special day. Yeah. And also a celebration of uh, independence and resistance, right? Mm -hmm. um, we asked you to show us um, your favorite library. Mm -hmm. Why don't we see <coughs> who did you bring us? Um, who did you bring us, Tofik? Uh, two friends. Yeah. Uh, the owner of this uh, toko. Yeah. Indonesian, the small Indonesian restaurant in Leiden. Uh, they are uh, very amazing people. Um, the one on the left is uh, Renu, Renu Lubis, and then the, uh, the one on the right is his hus her husband, uh, Edward uh, Rusty. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're good cooks. Yeah? Excellent cooks. Indonesian food? Uh, with little appropriations, but yes, <laughs> Indonesians. <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you. What about you, Andres? Let's see, uh, who did you... Uh, did I bring? Uh, yeah, who's your favorite Leidener? My favorite Leidener is uh, Pierre, Pierre mm -hmm. Strollenberg. Yeah. And he is the owner of a coffee house, and that's in the uh, corner of the Papen, Papengracht and Het Gerecht. And um, yeah, I, I love the place. Uh, he knows a lot about watches, uh, knows about a lot of, of art. His, his background is actually, he's an art historian. Mm -hmm. uh, a really interesting guy. I've always appreciated uh, talking to him, and he's super nice. Uh, and I love the place. Uh, actually, I met my wife in that place. Uh, yeah, it's for me. He's my favorite light, and I always have the time to to go there and talk to him. And uh, yeah, that's that's really nice to be there. Lovely stories. Thank you so much uh, for being in our studio and sharing your stories. Um, that's the end of another episode of Hello Leiden. Folks, next Saturday we are going to be here again sharing other fascinating stories from the rest of the world. Um, stay safe, um, watch us, uh, follow us at YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We are basically everywhere. You cannot miss us. And if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and have a story to share, just like Andres and Tofik did today, please email us at hello Leiden at slotestad.nl. Have a good evening. Hello, Leiden. Leho, Leiden. Khoshamadi, Leiden. Zdrasui, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Bonjour, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Marhaba, Leiden. Ciao, Leiden. Hi, Podai, Leiden.